What is going on YouTube, SciGuy29? Coming at you with another video response. Uh, today this video response is for Jason, Mr. Fisherbike. And he's running just a contest because he uh, wants to see vintage cards because he's decided he wants to do get, get some more vintage. So he wants to see what everyone has. And he wants you to show five to ten of your favorite. Uh, hard to narrow that down. Uh, I came up with nine. Figured nice, nice number to use for for uh, a baseball response. And so I've got a variety, and I mean a variety, of different cards to show. Uh, favorites for different reasons um, in my collection. We're going to start with this first one. And this was one of the earliest vintage cards I ever picked up. Got this out of a dollar box at a show probably about 88 or 89. Uh, I know it had to be in there because I know Dan Quisenberry was playing for the Cardinals at the time. So he, the Royals had already released him. Because I remember I was at the show, I was looking, digging through boxes of cards for him, of him. Uh, and I came across this and I just thought, this is pretty cool. And this is the 34 Gowdy, Charlie Geringer. Here's the back. So just because that was an actual pickup of mine, uh, and definitely my earliest card at that time in my collection, not the oldest card now, but at that time, I guarantee you, uh, it, it certainly was. Uh, totally change in bases uh, is this uh, 62 post of Harmon Killebrew. Just to have such an affinity for the serial cards uh, so, and you can see this one's terribly cut there at the bottom. Um, but I think I picked this up for a quarter. So you can't go wrong there of, of the great Harmon Killebrew. Um, you know, serial cards were such a huge part of my growing up. Uh, my brother and I would fight over who got to pull the card. Uh, usually it was the, the 3D Kellogg's. But, um, you know, just another era of those. Uh, next, we have a 65 tops embossed. Willie Mays, um, obviously not in the greatest of shape. It is a Willie Mays, card number 27 in the set. Uh, but this is uh, uh, one of my favorites because of how I obtained it. Uh, there was a, I'm gonna call him a guy because he was, he was probably 10 or 12 years older than me, but had a huge collection and I traded him, I think like a 76 Reggie Jackson and a, seven, a couple 76 cards for this card. So that will forever stay in my collection because it was the first maze I ever owned. Uh, next, I love this card just because uh, I think it's a great shot. I love the cards that are, that are going this direction and that's the 74 Carlton Fisk. Just love the photography on that. Uh, next is something uh, when I really started looking at Hall of Famers, um, this just randomly popped up in a search one day, and it's the 1927 W560 strip card of Kiki Kyler. And I've got a Luke Sewell back there. I couldn't find it. I was going to show them together. Um, but yeah, you can see they're, they're like in uh, playing cards, and they're blank backed. You can see they were cut out. You can still see the border around the top of the Top on the side there. So that's something a little different. Uh, next, one of my all-time favorite sets is a set that I'd love to get more cards from. Uh, this is one of, I think, three that I have. And this is the uh, 53 Redman. And this is Hoyt Wilhelm. Um, just uh, something about these cards and, and the, uh, see there's no tab. Uh, and just the history behind them. Here's the back. I've got a Mickey Vernon, and you can see the dotted line on the back where they were supposed to cut it off, so to send in for whatever it was. This one would have been for the big league, big league style baseball cap, free of extra cost. Uh, so yeah, um, what a deal. Uh, next is a 1941 play ball, Hal Trotsky. Just a beautiful set. Um, I got this 
um, because I'm trying to collect a a uh, graded card of every Iowan that's played in the majors, not just professional baseball, but the majors uh, that has had a show the back um, card made of them. Um, some of them are a little crazy. Uh, some I should have by now, but don't. But this is one that I really, really liked, so I got it. And this next one fits into that category too. Uh, but this is a 1922 E120 American Caramel of Bing Miller. It's a really good player back in the early 20s. Hailed from Iowa. Can't remember where right now, but here's the back. Kind of has that feel where they give you everything else that's coming with it. But just love that love the pose and the the, the the border on that is fantastic. All the different baseball scenes. Really love those. And then last but certainly not least is um, one of the oldest, if not the oldest card in my collection. Uh, this is of another Iowan. Uh, Fred Clark was born in Winterset, Iowa. And they still have a monument to him in the cemetery down there. Uh, Fred Clark, uh, John Wayne. Uh, was born in Winterset. Um, so a yeah, few few people that might be known from there. Plus they're known for their covered bridges, the bridges of Madison County. Those are right outside of Winterset, Iowa. So if you've ever seen the movie or the musical, read the book, that's where it's from. So, oh, But this is a 1911 T201 Mecca double folder of Fred Clark and Byrne of Chicago. Uh, R. Burn. Yeah, there we go. So there's the Fred Clark. Back it up a little bit so you can see it. You can see a little bigger slab than the usual cards. But uh, a gorgeous, not a, you know, obviously not a beautiful example. It's a two. Um, but still has the color you want to see in the sky. Uh, and on the uniform, you can see the stripes and the socks and those kind of things. Here's the other side. I'll, I'll do it. Well, there's so you can see our burn. And then there's the stat part of it. So, Jason, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, love showing cards. I can't wait to see what other people put out for you. And uh, like I always say, collect what you love. Love what you collect. See ya.